Welcome to this edition of the AE Report. I'm Dana Feigenbaum. With the basketball season just underway, I took some time to sit down with Associate Commissioner Frank Sullivan to discuss some important rules that you fans might want to know for the upcoming season. Rules committees meet every year. They look at experimental data that they have. They look at some anecdotal information that they've assembled during the year. And then every other year, they're able to implement real change into the game, changing of the rule book. And that's what we're seeing this year in both men's and women's college basketball. The men have implemented a lot of changes. The women have changed the format of the game presentation. The men have really been aggressive. These have been sweeping changes going into this college basketball season. So let's focus on the men's side. Um, there are two major changes that have attracted the media. What are those two? Well, it's a 30-second clock, and, and I think there's a, there's a hope in some quarters that will increase scoring, but more importantly, it will impact possessions. There'll be more possessions per game, per team. The second one is restricted area. If you look at that restricted area in the three-second lane, there is two circles there now where there was only one a year ago. A restricted area for men and women was three feet last year. The men have decided to expand that restricted zone to four feet. The experimental data that they had uh, from various games indicated when it went to four feet there were fewer crashes at the rim which is what they're trying to avoid. Fewer physical crashes at the rim by offense and defensive players. It should make the area a little bit, it makes the area a little bit bigger. It makes it more challenging for a defensive player to move his feet outside of the area. As in the past, a player control foul where a player left his feet, shot the basketball, and charged into a player, either in the restricted area or outside the restricted area, now could get that basket as well, would be called for a foul, and also would get the goal. Now the Rules Committee has de decided to eliminate the opportunity to score. If you crash into a player who takes a legitimate charge and the ball goes through the basket, that basket will no longer count. Uh, for years, it has always counted. Five second calls, and, and, and one is when you catch the basketball, you must put the ball on the floor or pass within five seconds. You can't hold it for more than five, and you'll see officials chopping that with their hands. Previously, the same thing applied to dribbling. You could only dribble the ball uh, for a five second period of time with somebody legally guarding you. The Rules Committee has decided with the shot clock going down to 30 seconds, we can eliminate the five second closely guarded of the dribbler. So now a dribbler can go as long as he wants with the basketball in his hands and a defender in front of him will not be restricted to just five seconds to pass the basketball or shoot it. This was very disconcerting the last couple of years where uh, players would contest jump shooters or contest a pump fake uh, when somebody went to, to shoot the basketball and offensive players would move into the path of that defender in an, in an attempt to create contact. So the Rules Committee has been very specific about what can be done here by the offensive player. If that defensive player who runs at a shooter is not going to make contact with that shooter, straight line either way, then the offensive player has no right to leave his space going left or right into to create that contact. So I think some some fans will, will see that this is difficult to gauge. I think officials have the best vantage point for it. But if it does happen, an offensive player leaves his space to create contact at an airborne defender challenging his shot or his pump fake, it will be a no call this year. In the past, that was a foul. The Rules Committee has noticed a number of shooters shooting the basketball at a, a defender closing out or challenging that shot and kicking their feet into the path of that defender, that too will be a no call this year. That element has been taken out of the jump shooter's arsenal of creating contact and getting to the free throw line. Well, you know, defensively, we said, well, offensively and defensively, we thought about verticality rights more so to the defensive player, arms straight up in the air, floor to ceiling, not leaving your space. The rules committee feels that there are a lot of defensive players who are violating that by going into the offensive player. More importantly, a number of offensive players in recent years violated the defensive verticality as well, the, 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 the verticality of the defender as well. So now we'll see that they're trying to define uh, vertical space to both offense and defense. Both offense and defense are entitled to floor to ceiling vertical space. And anybody that crowds at either an offensive player moving into a defender or a defender moving into an offensive player can be called for a foul. Is there anything else with the pace of play that will be changing? I think clearly the 30 second clock should increase possessions during the course of the game, but also there's a strong will to get the game moving. Stoppages in play have been problematic in the eyes of the Rules Committee in recent years. Teams slow getting out of their huddles during timeouts, coaches slow replacing disqualified players uh, during the course of 
fouling out of a basketball game. So there's a little more penalty involved in terms of teams not being ready to play and move the game along. The technical foul uh, that was issued before for a delay of game was two shots. The rules committee's reduced it to one shot, hoping that officials will use it more after warning teams about not being ready to play. So you're absolutely right. Reduction of physical play, reduction of stoppages in the game, increasing the pace of the game, all have been paramount in the guidelines that the Rules Committee has put out this season. We appreciate Frank taking time to sit down with us to discuss these new rule changes. For a complete list of all the new changes that are implemented this season, head to NCAA.com. For AmericaEast.TV, I'm Dana Feigenbaum.